Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we're going to be taking a look at this technique for creating an extreme bevel. And you could be able to use it on the built-in text tool or your own graphics. Lots of uses for this, so let's get started. So just a quick check on our project setup. I'm going with 1920, 1080 as usual. The frame rate and the duration don't matter because this is a static effect. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just paste in some text like that. So this is the text tool. You don't need to watch me typing and formatting text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this group and I'm going to make a clone of it. So right click, make clone layer. And then I'm going to take the group I've just made and duplicate it, right click, duplicate. And then the top group here, I'm going to name result. This group here, I'm going to rename height map. And the bottom group, I'm going to rename as base. I'm just going to turn off the base group. And indeed, I'm also going to turn off the height map group. Now, let's select the results group. And you probably know that if you come to stylize and indent, you get a sort of bevel effect and you can turn up the softness and it's kind of OK. Let's just reduce the ambient down a bit and the brightness up a bit. You'll notice there's kind of some funkiness on the corners here. And this is also as far as we can really go with this bevel. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to use our height map group as the height map source. So let's drag that into the height map and it's looking a bit funky and we need to do two things. First of all, we need to format this height map group by adding a color solid to it, putting it behind, making it black, and then come back into the indent filter and turn off stretch to fit. And now we're sort of back where we were. I'm just going to increase that depth to 20 and let's set the brightness to 0.75 and 0.15 is good for the ambient. So we're going to work on this clone layer in the height map group in order to create our effect. So the first thing I want to do is I want to fill it with black. So I'm going to come to stylize and fill and set this color to black. And then I want to come to filters and border and stroke. And what we're going to do is turn this red to white. And already you see we've got a slightly more interesting looking bevel than we had before. And now if I switch the position to inside like that, it's really quite extreme. We can increase the width, say to 20. And we've got the beginnings of a very extreme bevel. So we can adjust the fade inside value. And you can see that that now controls the profile. But we've got these kind of flat areas around the edges and we don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to come to filters, blur and Gaussian blur. I'm going to set this amount up to 64. You can see already that's kind of a bit more interesting because we've got a, a kind of softer look. And then we're also going to add filters, color and levels. And we're going to come into the alpha and we're going to crunch the white down like so. The more extreme we go, the more we're kind of filling that in. So then we can come back to our fade inside and we can adjust that. And you can see that we can even sharpen that up even more. So we've now got a kind of Photoshop style sharp bevel and that was not too hard to do. And that's already pretty useful. But what I want, I want to do is I want to show you how we would add this to an image that we've imported. So I'm going to come to my assets folder, import the thing called shape. And I would actually want to drop it down into the base filter there and turn off my text. Now, the thing about this is that it's an image that doesn't have an alpha channel and we need to give it transparency in order for this to work. So lots of different ways in which we could do that. You could do it with a Luma Kia, you could do it with a channel mixer. I'm going to do it with a slightly novel way. I'm going to make a clone of it and then I'm going to add an image mask to the clone. I'm going to take the original shape and I'm going to switch the source channel to luminance. So now we're using the luminance of itself to create the cutout. And you can see that our effect has now been applied nicely to this logo shape. So what we can now do is we can get even funkier with our height map clone layer. First thing I want to do is just look at some texture. So let's add stylize, add noise. You'd want to turn off 
auto animate there. But you see now we've got uh, some roughness to our image. And if indeed, if we wanted to experiment with the text, you could see we've got that roughness in there as well. That looks pretty nice. So let's revert to our shape. We could instead add stylize and crystallize, and that creates a different sort of roughness. You'd want to make sure to turn the speed down to nothing, and you can adjust the size to taste. So that looks quite nice. Another thing we could do is we could come in and add something like stylize and hatched screen. Let's uh, stretch it out like so. So that looks kind of interesting. But I also wanted to show you what we can do if we add filters and stylize and high pass. And you can see immediately we've got a whole new layer of contouring. So we've got a sort of a, a dip inside the original bevel, like so. And so that's much more interesting. And so we can adjust the radius and we can really sort of sharpen that up like that. And you could maybe just put the hatch screen above that and turn it on. And so now you've got that texture inside those new contours. So there's loads you can do really with uh, this group here, adding sort of distortion filters to it or stylized filters, and it's going to look good. So another thing I want to do is I want to come to the library and generators, and I want to drag in a gradient right at the top there. Just going to adjust this gradient colors till I get something a bit nicer. And then just adjust these Y start and end. So 320 for that and negative 320 for the end. And then to this group, I'm going to add an image mask and I'm going to use my base group as the source like that. And we can come to the group and blend mode and set that to color dodge. So that's kind of overcooked it quite a bit. So let's come back to our result group and above the indent, let's drop in a levels. And then let's adjust the gamma like that. So maybe reduce the white down a little bit. That hatch screen probably just reduced that mix value down so it's not too strong. So that looks kind of quite nice. And the other thing I want to point out is we can come back down to this levels here above the Gaussian blur. And if we select RGB rather than alpha, we can crunch the black and we can and get even more sort of sharpness into that inner bevel. So really just heaps that you can do with this and it's going to look great. Don't forget we can also come into the indent filter and we can adjust that light rotation. We can animate that if we want and that, that really adds to this sort of shiny effect because it's really following all those contours really rather nicely. So I just want to make two final points before we finish. The first is that so far we've only looked at black and white source images, but in actual fact, we can use color images. So I'm going to bring in this colored shape from my assets folder and let's turn off that old shape. We can probably turn off that levels there and that gradient. But as you see, we've now actually got a colored version that's using the colors from the original image. And the other point to make, as with all effects of this kind, is you need to think sensibly about the size and the surface area of the image that you're applying the effect to. So, for example, if I type very small text, it just doesn't work at all. And we need a much larger image size for the effect to deliver anything that's worthwhile. So please keep that in mind. So there you go, there's loads you can do with this technique to give your graphics a custom look, and I'm sure you're gonna be able to find lots of uses for it. So thanks very much indeed for watching, and see you again soon.